Hello VC Vinyl Community. So I have been watching videos quite a lot in the last days and uh, I came across this um, Give Me 10 challenge by Sonic Mainliner that uh, asked for 10 albums that one could easily describe as obscure and yet maybe worthwhile to listen to it. Now of course um, obscure is such a relative term isn't it because uh, while an album can be very obscure from the perspective of the general public there might be also a small following to the artist behind the album and those do not regard it as obscure at all. So I really hope I don't offend anyone if uh, suddenly your favorite album is in this in this selection of mine. So uh, I would like to start here with uh, with an album by uh, Angeli. Now Angeli is a is an French artist from uh, Bordeaux, and uh, I mean this album has a really diff difficult title called Bisherigori and uh, it is uh, experimental music partly electronic but in large parts uh, with the found objects now Angeli is famous for um, as you can probably see here on the back side she's famous for um, using uh, like household objects and making music with them so in this case this can be a sewing machine. She once made a whole album uh, based on sounds she created uh, with the wheelchair. It's a nice gatefold cover so you can open it here and I don't know if the light is so good here today. Do you see anything? Now um, this is a this is the kind of music you would only like if you are generally interested in experimental music, into musique concrete, uh, into uh, found objects music. So um, there are no hook lines and no melodies here. It's a really nice label. Now this album came out 1986 but I got it actually in 1994 because uh, I was in Bordeaux then and I met the artist she was a really uh, nice charming person and uh, I've been there with a couple of other musicians and uh, she just came by and gave us all records and CDs really nice so the next album um, <laughs> is uh, Warrow by, uh, by Nathalie Rose Lebrecht and uh, this is uh, well this is this, this one is really difficult to uh, categorize and I assume it is not meant to be categorized at all it is a very vocal based music and uh, um, Natalie Rose Lebrecht could be regarded as a singer-songwriter if you wanted to, but she's just a little too avant-gardistic for that, maybe. So um, this is uh, rather, uh, in parts, experimental album, and yet sometimes very melodic and sometimes very simple and sometimes sort of convoluted. It's um, it's certainly very very interesting. Um, Most certainly it is to some extent rooted in uh, psychedelic music. It's mainly acoustic. It has some percussions on it. It has a lot of vocals on it, arranged and uh, and uh, sort of orchestrated in the most intriguing ways. So this is really a nice album. Now the label actually has a green pot blue pot on it 
which is uh, the name of Natalie's uh, band, but still this album has been released under her artist name, Natalie Lebrecht. So uh, if you see this somewhere, give it a try, quite interesting. Now the next one is uh, Drainage by Rosenkracht. Now Rosenkracht is an Austrian band and uh, there's once you start to listen to it there's no doubt where their influence lies. It's mainly an, in uh, German Krautrock of the, of the early 70s. Now this is a band from yeah well late 80s early 90s and um, this is the back side and uh, I mean the other part of their influence is rather um, was uh, the sort of post-punk experimental music um, psychedelic mostly yes this is a psychedelic band um, which uh, has some really interesting tracks on it I actually once organized a concert well, it was like well, 25 years ago for them in Munich so they came and they had a lot of interesting things on the stage like um, sort of bowls filled with water with lights under them and, and there was sort of drums put on it and they created sound with that really interesting now the album the vocals are sometimes quite strange but uh, I think this is really a nice album for those who collect psychedelic music and compared with others quite a rare I think here's the label oh yeah the album has a sort of booklet inside with the photographs of the band lyrics I mean, there is a there is a sort of a romantic dimension to them um, there is a level of mysticism and a sort of an esoteric touch but uh, mostly the music is rather psychedelic next one which would be number four of my obscure selection this is a nice album. This is uh, The Knight and the Wizard, uh, which is a collaboration between uh, Magic Lantern Cycle and Neon Knights. And the, those are two Japanese bands, which both um, are quite sort of uh, post punk experimental bands. Now, uh, this comes in this, well, uh, sort of a paper package. Which you can turn around. Yeah, there's a little more inside. Now the music, as I said, the music is almost atmospheric, alternative, um, sort of some punky elements. Um, yeah, so this is what you get inside. You can actually open that. Because right inside is already the record, which comes with a really nice label on this side and also this side yeah, and this element this sleeve element can be obviously opened it turns into a, a huge picture with uh, more details about the band mostly in Japanese well, there's a nice track uh, on it, uh, which is called Cities of the Red Light, which features David Tibet of current 93's fame. Probably one of the many times when he was in Japan, they kind of hijacked him into a music studio. Um, well, there are all kind of strange leaflets inside, all Japanese. Oh yeah, and here is a, well, wait, this is a 
sort of transcription into English of, uh, of the lyrics. So in most parts this has a really nice sound, this album. It's not, it's not too noisy or too harsh as one would maybe expect from some uh, Japanese productions of, from this area. Now for the next one I thought um, let's do something completely crazy. So don't crucify me. But this is the soundtrack to the movie Wild Orchid. Now Wild Orchid was a really shitty movie. <laughs> it was it was really two horrible hours of my life to watch it. But actually I saw it in cinema <laughs> like over 20 years ago. Well, actually 25 or even more but I came out of the movie and thought I heard some really nice songs and some f some some familiar tunes in quite different uh, versions so I looked it up and bought it and uh, it's a really nice selection of songs it's mainly based in uh, sort of uh, African Latin American Brazil music this is very light-hearted this is something you can just play um, party music you could even call it but there is a really nice version of the famous El Ejibo by Margaret Menezes and uh, a really a version I didn't know of uh, Slave Dream by Ofra Haza so it's a lot of it's a lot of this kind of late 80s uh, early world music stuff um, but kind of fun to listen so I, <laughs> I always like this this selection of songs it's rather enjoyable but this is sort of a obscure choice within the obscure selection. The next one is a compilation. Um, it's uh, the French band Trisomie Vingt et Tant. Um, and it's called The First Songs, Volume 1. Passion Divisé. Now, uh, this is uh, music that has always been called uh, Cold Wave, which is somewhat a French answer to the German uh, sort of post-punk electronica revolution. It's highly listenable, it's interesting. Um, and there's a song called Jakarta on it, which is really nice. This is not a, this is not a difficult music to get into. It has a certain charm. Um, even though people have sometimes issues with the band's name. Well, um, the package is not that interesting. Wow. Now this came out on LD Records, which is actually a subdivision of uh, Play It Again, Sam. It was released in Brussels, but yet I know quite sure that this is a French, French outfit. So this is something, uh, I mean this is like, I mean this came out like 1987, yeah, but most of the music is 83, 84, so this is really typical, uh, it's not, I mean it's not, it's not electronic music per se, it's sort of, a, it has sort of a Kraftwerk element to it, but more combined with the stuff like, you could imagine like Cabaret Voltaire. <laughs> now the next one, Nada by Death in June. So a uh, little bit of a controversial choice. Now this was, um, if I'm not wrong, this was the second or third uh, album by Death in June. And it's uh, sort of uh, the, the lineup of Mark II. This was after Tony Wakeford left. To to do uh, Sol Invictus. I've always liked this album. So it's basically a duo work by Douglas Pierce and Patrick Ligas O'Kill. And um, it has really, really a nice sound to it. I mean, those, those are really good songs. And there's just, there's not a single track that is somehow not interesting. So, um, that's the inner sleeve. Sure, the label is somehow nice too. Uh -huh. 
So. So this is one of the examples of an album where the sort of hardcore fan base would accuse me of what do you mean by obscure? Nothing obscure about that. This is in the middle of my life. <laughs> but um, now this is uh, today this kind of music is called neofolk, which is a term that did not exist back then. This is like 19, uh, 1989 maybe or uh, maybe actually it's gonna be a bit earlier than that. Uh, I have to look up when this album came out because this could be like 85 maybe 86. It's an interesting mixture of electronic music and folk music basically. Not two th not two musical spheres that are combined too often, but it works very well. There's a strange attitude to this music. So um as I said, one of the guys on this album is Patrick Ligas, and uh, this brings me to the next album, which is Morphogenesis by Sixcom, which is his main project. Now this band has never really decided if they want to be called Six or Sixcom, so some albums are with just Six with X and some have a TH after the Six. Um, yeah, it's an interesting sound, you don't hear that every day. It's sort, of, it's sort of an indie, half electronic, half tribal, half, uh, well, I, I usually, you could call it pagan rock if you wanted to. Um, usually it's being sort of regarded as part of this whole um, neo-folk soup, but um, it sounds a bit different. It's not as, it's not as uh, folk music based as many of the others. Has a really unique and highly, highly weird uh, front cover, a uh, cover picture. That's the flip side. But it's a good listen. Obviously, it's not music for everyone, but uh, I mean, which obscure album is and now an empty label <laughs> next one is uh, really a beautiful album um, it's basically a compilation it's called Incipit Musica Catholica and this was released by Sub Rosa now Sub Rosa was a really wonderful uh, art avant-garde ethnographic uh, label in Belgium in Brussels and um, I mean, they did a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of uh, compilations that I bought. Always really uh, sort of on the on the on the edge of avant-garde and experimental music and uh, um, all interesting stuff. Now, Incipit Musica Catholica is basically a, it's an it's a uh, compilation about Catholic music, but uh, from a rather ethnographical standpoint so even though it has some really big choir music in it sort of church dome uh, music uh, it uh, takes a sort of a tour through the whole world to completely different places where sort of catholic religious music is more um, more part of a local folklore so it sounds not as one would expect. It's a nice label. Yeah, I wonder if you can get this one still, but uh, it might be expensive. Who knows? This is a really good condition. It's not the kind of album you play a lot, right? So it's not difficult to keep it in a good condition. Well, well. What is this one? Oh, yes. Now, actually, this is the last one. This has already been 10. Now, this is the, the debut album by Laszlo Hortobadi. Laszlo Hortobadi is a Hungarian musician. 
who sometimes releases stuff under the uh, under the moniker of the Gaian Uteak Society. And this is Transreplica Meccano, his first album. Um, now this is really quite beautiful product with these golden letters and blue. Um, now if you open it, it's not a gatefold exactly, but it's kind of this flap and you have a, the record inside. Now there's a numbering on the inner sleeve. So here on the inside it's actually labeled with Las La Horta Badi, not with the Gaia Kutek Society. That's another case where the artist sometimes can decide the B side. Now this is interesting music. Um, now if you take if you take everything that Hortobadi did after this debut album, you will mostly have to deal with uh, kind of highly complex Indian Persian sort of music combined with sampling with uh, uh, sort of trip hop music and. Uh, so he was, he's really a great pioneer of uh, that uh, thing that people call world music now, which is a term I quite dislike because it basically means nothing. I mean, if you, if you like music from Nigeria, you like music from Nigeria. I mean, what do you mean world music? So uh, Las Lorto Baji is sort of a specialist for... Um, um, that's what he studied, by the way. He's, he's, a, he's a musical scholar that is releasing albums for 30 years now that basically all deal with uh, the sort of Central Asian uh, Middle East arena. But his first album, Trans Replica Meccano, is, um, it, it has already a touch of this kind of a musical culture that he was creating. But it's a bit different. It's more an experimental album. It's already there, what what he later would sort of become, but it's still more electronical. Um, and it's a good listen. It's a really nice album. It has all kind of samples in it, uh, mixed with the percussions and flutes and a lot of synthesizer music. It's a wild ride, actually. Yeah, so... Uh, that was my choice, my pick of 10 obscure albums that are actually worthwhile to listen if you are into that kind of thing, of course. So I hope you found this interesting. See you. Bye.